Well, I'm really pleased to be here with this group. I think this is a great conference, and, and I'm real excited about all these talks, learning a lot. I'm talking about the uh, Cornell Organic Cropping Systems Project. And uh, it's been amazing to me to, to realize that we're definitely a youngster in all this. Uh, we started in 2005, and many, many of these uh, projects that we've been hearing about have been going on for 20 years or more, which is great. And again, there's just so much to learn. Uh, this is a long-term, and we've called it multidisciplinary project, and I, I'm learning more terminology about that as well. Uh, we have two separate um, field trials, a vegetable one and a cash grain trial. In each of these, uh, we are comparing four different organic systems over time, and we're looking at soil, crop yield, quality, pests, weeds, and economics. And for this talk, I'm going to concentrate on the cash grain experiment. A real important aspect of, of, of the whole uh, project that we're working on is, is a close collaboration with, with uh, farmers and extension advisors. And we have a, a separate group for each, for each for the grain trial and a separate group for the uh, vegetable trial. And each winter, we meet for a day and intensively go over all our results from, from the past year. And, and we um, have specific targeted questions that we ask our farmer advisors and really take their, their uh, advice into, into account. And it's a great learning experience uh, for both sides. I think the farmers get charged up from, from hearing what we're thinking about and maybe, maybe seeing some uh, insights into, for instance, uh, nutrients on their farms and things like that. And the, the, the researchers get such, I think, a, um, a demonstration of, of the multifaceted way that farmers look at, at questions. The, the discussions that, that uh, they have about some of these, what seem to be kind of simple questions that we ask them, go all over the map and are including all these different aspects. It's real exciting for the researchers and stimulating. It makes us humble in a lot of ways. Okay, so for this grain trial, we use the base rotation that is followed by most of the organic farmers, the cash grain farmers in our region. And uh, we're, we've been through two complete rotations at this point. First rotation, um, we were focusing on the, the, the sort of NOP mandated transition period and, and how that sort of works out biologically and, of course, how it works out economically. And now that we're past that period, we're looking at what are the long, uh, the best long-term sustainable uh, approaches. And, and along with what a lot of people have been saying about their trials, we are evolving over time, again, with this farmer input that, we, that is so important. And uh, we use the, the phrase adaptive management to talk about that. Okay, so the, the, the basic cash grain rotation that we use, uh, we start with soybeans after harvest. It's uh, planted to spelt, and that spelt is, is uh, undersown to red clover. And after the, after the spelt harvest, the clover grows for the rest of the season and then a little bit in the following spring when it's plowed down for nitrogen uh, for the, the corn crop that follows, and then, it, then we go around it again. And uh, some pictures, um, the soybeans, and then we follow it with the spelt. You can see the, the clover underneath there. After the spelt harvest, the, the clover has been suppressed quite a bit by the, by the spelt, but uh, by the following spring, it's really producing a lot of biomass. And then it, it gets plowed under and uh, is followed by uh, uh, cash grain corn. The uh, a couple of aspects about the experimental design. Uh, the soil type is is um, doesn't have the greatest drainage, but um, it's productive, deep soil, and uh, flat, and uh, it, it definitely is one of the better soils in in, uh, in our area of New York State. Not the best, but a good one. Uh, we have five treatments uh, in this in this project in the, in the grain side, uh, four organic, and then we do have a, a, a chemical comparison in this one, not in the vegetable one. Um, there's four replications. We enter the rotation at two, at two different entry points, so each plot is split, and one half of the plot is a year behind the other in terms of the rotation. The uh, chemical comparison um, plots, because of the uh, requirements for organic certification, 
which the organic side of it is all certified. We have a 50-foot buffer strip between that and our chemical treatments. And so we can't really uh, use uh, statistical comparisons there, but we can sort of get benchmark numbers from how the, uh, how the uh, chemical comparison is going. And again, we've just finished two rotations. So when we started the experiment, we thought about, again, this, entering this transition period and what, what, what farmers might think, and it, of course, getting a lot of, of, uh, of input from our farmer advisors. And the first, uh, first uh, kind of tack would be to, to really try to maximize yield uh, in your organic system through uh, heavy fertilization. But then on the other hand, there's the other, other alternative of, of uh, getting a higher return by reducing the inputs and, and having low input costs. And then the issue came up that, well, maybe, maybe uh, going right into the transition, transition period, being very conscious of trying to suppress weeds would maybe lead to better uh, results in the beginning and then they would follow uh, through later on in the experiment. And finally, of course, there's a lot of interest in, in trying to reduce tillage in organic systems. So we basically created um, uh, our cropping systems based on those, those sort of questions. And the, the one I'm going to abbreviate in the, in the tables that you'll see is high fert, it's high fertility system. It's actually not really all that high, especially compared to some of the, the what I've been hearing on some of the other projects. Um, basically, our corn gets about one ton uh, per acre of a, of a composted chicken man, uh, manure material. It's about a 5.53 or a 5.43 analysis. Um, and I've heard three tons and, and some, uh, 10 tons of, uh, of dairy compost. And, and I certainly understand where those are coming from, but this is, um, uh, we're trying in, in to, to uh, copy what our farmers are doing, and that typically is what they're putting on before their corn. Um, and then also extra fertility is also in this high fertility uh, system. Extra fertility is, is added before the spelt and also the soybeans uh, at lower rates. And so we're kind of, you know, little, little nudges all the way along and plus a pretty good size one for the corn. Uh, the low fertility system, on the other hand, gets only corn starter fertilizer. That's the only fertilizer input it gets. And both these last two systems, um, we use just standard tillage for our area, moldboard plow, disc, harrow, uh, and then regular cultivation uh, tools. We use a, a tine weeder and uh, usually two cultivations. Okay, in the intensive weed management system, uh, we're, we're using the same low input, low fertility system, but we're, we're going into it with enhanced uh, uh, attention to the weeds. And so we're doing things like, if we can, we'll put in a stale seed, seed bed uh, um, fallow before the um, soybeans are planted. Uh, we use a heavier uh, seeding rate on the spelt to, you know, to be a thicker stand and suppress weeds better. And, um, and we also, uh, after the um, soybeans before the spelt, we'll do more moldboard plowing instead of the disking that we do on our other ones. And finally, there's a reduced tillage uh, approach. And this one started out to be, we were trying to do a, an organic ridge till system. And essentially, we had to, we had to throw that out and, and it's in rehab now. So I'm not going to be you know, presenting the results from that one. Uh, we're, we're trying a, a more uh, sort of sophisticated system with deep zone tillage and, and some ridge till and some flat tillage. And we'll, I hope that in a a few years I might be able to share the, it's, it's an amazing story of resurrection, but now we're not there. Finally, um, there's the chemical comparison. Just like one of the other ones I heard about, we're not using GMO varieties. Uh, we're using our, actually organic uh, varieties. And so uh, that's the, the main difference. Otherwise, we're following pretty much Cornell recommends for, for uh, you know, fertilizers and herbicides and standard tillage doesn't get any winter cover crops. It does not get the, um, the uh, red clover uh, uh, seeded into the spelt. It just, it's just uh, after the, the season's over, we, we'll usually hit it uh, later with some Roundup to, to kill whatever weeds are coming up. But that's about it. 
But because of that, a lot of our conventional farming friends uh, don't like us to call it conventional systems. So that's why we're calling it conventional compare or chemical comparison, because the conventional growers in our area are, are all using Roundup Ready soybeans, and, and, and it's, a, it's a little different system, and certainly gets different economic results, as you'll see. Now, this is a, a kind of a crummy slide, and I, 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 um, I hope it comes out in our proceedings and you can look at it. I think the only things uh, to, to, to take it from this version, and I, I, I've tried to tailor it in, in the next slide so that it will be easier to, uh, to digest, but you can see that, that uh, after the first several years of the rotation, uh, in particular the corn yields, where it's green here, that's where the, the yields are above the county average. The corn yields really started to kick in, and I think that's pretty interesting. Part of it is because uh, my background is as an organic vegetable grower, and I finally learned how to grow field crops a little bit. But, um, but also it's because I think some of the biology in the system really did start kicking in with the, the nitrogen cycling, and, and we, we've got some really, really nice uh, corn uh, stands and yields uh, after the first rotation, essentially. Okay, this is what I'm hoping will be a little, a little um, easier to, to kind of uh, absorb and compare all at once. What I did was I, I standardized all the yields as a percentage of the county average. And so, and then since we have two entry points, there will be two, two crops uh, in each year. So for instance, the first year we start out with corn and soybeans, and if the corn was 90% of the, of the county average and the soybeans were 70%, then the, the number that would have been right here for 2005 would, would be 80%. So I just averaged those out, and it's the, sort of the standardized way of being able to, to compare the different crop yields in, an, in a not so messy uh, form as, as this. So what you can see is, is um, during the, the transition period in the beginning, uh, the crops are low, and then in 2008 was, was a good year, and we had good crops of both corn and soybeans in all the systems. And then later on, it seems like the, uh, the, um, the organic um, yields have, have sort of dropped off down below the county average. The, the dotted line is the chemical comparison, just so you can you see that that now is, is pretty much sticking right about at the county average levels. Now, what's interesting is that it's, the, it's the spelt that's, that's, that's um, basically pulling the organic yields down. Because if we look at just the corn and soybean yields, you know, done the same way, uh, they track really, really closely, basically, with the, with the chemical comparison. Whereas, again, there's, there's a, uh, the chemical comparison is, is basically higher in the later years of the experiment um, when, it, when the spelt is included. So that's, uh, that kind of just gives you a, a sort of a, a background on, on what uh, is going on with our yields and, and productivity. The crop budgets uh, were produced for this, for this experiment um, basically as a way to compare the different systems within the experiment. And uh, mostly I, I put these crop budgets together, and I, I, am, I need to say that I'm not an economist. Uh, I am, uh, my background is as a, a farmer and an extension educator. And, but I think that crop budgets are really important, and I, I think that sometimes, uh, at least I felt like I was able to maybe put a little more reality into, uh, or a little more caution into some of the budgets than I've seen in, in some of the ones that are that, I, that I've seen published around, too. And I think that the budgets that we're using do give us um, some insight into, into how these systems will perform in the real world. Now, crop, now this is a little bit of how I, how the, the, some of the way aspects of the construction of the budgets, but the crop prices, uh, as you all know, have been amazingly volatile over the past five, six years when our trial's been going on. And, I was really having trouble figuring out what prices to use, and what I what I just decided to do at the end was just average the price over the six year of the trial, and and these are the numbers that I came up with, and and uh, you know in the future they may be higher than this, it may be lower. And certainly in the beginning of the experiment they were they were lower than these numbers, but these are kind of average numbers that we can use. And spelt uh, sort of um, was a special problem because uh, there is no uh, conventional 
market for spelt, at least in our area. And so we got uh, information from our advisors and from buyers that 12 cents a pound was probably a reasonable uh, price for a quote-unquote conventional spelt price. And then uh, what we have, there's a, another problem, and that is that, uh, of course, during the transition period, it would be very unwise for a farmer to grow spelt because there is no conventional market for it, so where are you going to sell it? Uh, and so uh, what we did was, uh, in order to, to um, get financial budget figures, we basically uh, figured out a way to convert uh, um, our spelt yields into equivalent wheat yields. And there is, of course, a, a conventional market for that. So the assumption that we're going on is that a, basically a ton per acre of, of spelt is equivalent to about 40 bushels per acre of wheat, which is 2,400 pounds of wheat. And uh, again, um, well, anyways, you just have to take that, and, and if, if you wanted to change that with some of these numbers, uh, you certainly could. But that's, that's the uh, assumption that we're running it under. And also for this budget, um, it's a little more severe than, than I think reality uh, is for farmers because we have this, this notion that farmers buy retail and sell wholesale, but really that's not always the case. Uh, a lot of times farmers will use their own seed and they can also use their own uh, manure uh, produced on their farm or they can find cheap sources of, of manure from their neighbors who just, who just view as a waste product. Well, in this budget, um, it, we're, we're, we're sort of saying that farmers are always buying these inputs at sort of the going rate uh, and not getting any deals on things. Okay, so during the, the, the transition period, this is, this is what we found when we, when we um, ran these, these budget models. Um, I should say that input costs I said at, at just 2009 levels, um, but essentially, and, and, and remember that during the transition period, uh, nobody's, there's no organic premium for the crops, even though they're being managed organically. So uh, there were, there's a lot of red ink on this, on this uh, slide. But what's interesting and what I think is, is useful uh, information is that the soybeans actually did relatively well. The soybeans uh, produced um, positive net returns basically in almost every, in almost every case. Uh, in the different systems. Um, the comparison, I, I, I added a sort of a separate comparison. I mentioned that, that, uh, that many of our farmers um, in the area use Roundup Ready soybeans, so I, I sort of use the county average values and then, then the input cost for Roundup Ready soybeans. And so there's another, another column for that, just for another comparison. But basically, the, 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 the take home here is that except for the soybeans, the uh, organic uh, conversion crops really were, were, had the potential to lose a lot of money. And this, this will show you why. Um, for the, the first year that we grew corn, the materials expenses, which is mostly fertility costs, are just, way, they're just monstrous in the, in the organic corn. And uh, you can see that the other, the other uh, production expenses in the harvest and overhead are, are pretty similar for all these, all these systems, but there's clearly these, these really large expenses for fertility uh, in the corn. Now that same year, the, the soybeans, uh, this is the same sort of chart, and, and the soybeans, there's very little fertility input uh, or other input that goes into the, the soybeans, and so the uh, production uh, expenses were pretty similar for the soybeans, uh, even compared to the, to the uh, chemical comparison and much lower. Look at the scale. This is the top bar is uh, 400 and here it's 1400. So that just shows you what's going on with the corn. Okay, uh, after the, the, the transition period though is when things start to get pretty interesting. And essentially what, what we find there is that the, the average for the, for the four crops uh, in, you know, after the transition period is, is pretty, pretty good positive returns in both of the entry points, certainly much higher than, than the comparative uh, returns would be in, in the chemical systems. And so, uh, clear, and, th and this assumes a 30% um, premium for the, for the organic crop. So, you know, th that's of course the whole idea in this is that you may have to go through some difficult times, but eventually you'll have a payoff when you get good returns 
uh, from your organic production. And certainly that's what our that's what our farmers are seeing. And this is another this is an example when when uh, when corn has a uh, uh, the clo clover uh, cover crop plowed in before. Uh, the uh, materials expenses are way down from what you saw in that first slide in 2005. 2005, when we went into it, it had been in conventional corn the year before, so we had to put all that fertility on as a purchase input. Whereas here, obviously, the, the, the clover is supplying a lot of, of the, um, of the uh, nutrient, that nitrogen nutrients that we need. Okay, um, how am I doing on time? One minute. Done? Done? Okay, I'm going to go really quickly on, on our sort of uh, take-home message, and then I, I'll, I'll stop there. But the, 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 what we try, you know, what this shows is that there's, there's a potential for heavy losses during the transition period. There's a lot of, of uh, strategies besides what we did in our experiment that farmers could implement, such as, for instance, um, using the end of an of a alfalfa, if, they, if they're selling alfalfa hay from their farm, using the last two years of that as the entrance into, into the, uh, into the um, organic production rather than going in with, with uh, corn or something that needs all these inputs. Uh, certainly corn is the one that you probably want to avoid during the, and during the uh, transition years. Did I say depression years? <laughs> um, and soybeans, though, look like they have real potential there for transition as a, as a cash green crop. And finally, um, after the transition, certainly the red clover seems like it can, it can uh, produce enough uh, nitrogen uh, for really good corn yields. Those are, those are above the county average, really good yields for our area. Spelt also was the one crop that did better in the higher fertility uh, system. And uh, on the other hand, the, the addition of extra fertilizer before corn, when we have that clover, didn't help at all. So I think I'll just end it there, and I'm not to the end of the slideshow, but they'll, they'll fix that, right? So, great, thanks.